Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Be Brown Bag. It is so good to be back hosting. My name is Ariel Sanchez, uh, and I have the absolute pleasure of be of hosting Dennis Fauché tonight. Uh, it he has a, an amazing topic, um, so I will not take any of his thunder. What I will tell you is, uh, if you're if you're new to Be Brown Bag, check out our webpage. Uh, we put episodes. Um, on all the latest technologies, this is a way of learning. You are hearing from your peer, from your peers. No sales talk, just information. We have our schedule here, and you know we're we're pretty full up till June right now. So I definitely want everyone to look at this, look at our website, look at our our YouTube channel, so you can see the past talks. We have some really good ones, and including Dennis's today. So I'll stop my share. I'll give control over to Dennis. And I'll take any questions in the chat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks, Ariel. <clears throat> Let's get this going here. All right. Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thanks for coming. I'm really excited uh, to be doing this tonight. Uh, uh, tonight for me, maybe it's not tonight where you are, but um, so we're going to do something fun. We're going to do sort of an introduction to machine learning which is not what I do for a living. I'm not a math major. I'm not a, a Python ranger. Um, I'm just an enterprise architect uh, for a living, but this is a hobby of mine and I think it's really fun and it's really cool actually. So hopefully tonight uh, we'll spend a couple of minutes together and I'll show you kind of how to get started on things like this, self-driving cars or teaching computers to think. You know, it's it's pretty cool and there's actually easy ways to get started and there's hard ways. So I'm going to try to show you the easy ways. So on this screen here is all the ways you can get in touch with me. Um, pretty much just about anywhere. I'm Dennis Fauché uh, on all the socials and uh, so you can get in touch with me there. I will, uh, as, as Ariel said, this will be posted on YouTube. Uh, this presentation has links to everything I'm going to cover tonight in it. I'll try to share those with the V Brown Bag team so they can put those in the description uh, when the YouTube video goes live. And you know, if you want to copy of the presentation with all the live links, just shoot me a note any way you want, you know, Twitter, email, whatever. And then my blogs at the bottom there were actually some of this stuff I've, I've written up and it's where I do all my mad science projects and write them up for, uh, for people. So, so hopefully the, all the time and pain that I spent figuring out can save somebody some time. And that's kind of what we're up to tonight. All right, so let's uh, let's get into it. So, two parts to tonight. Part one is how to build a um, laser guided self driving cat bot like this, and uh, exercise your very large cat who was here a second ago but has moved on. And the second part is getting started with machine learning. Some harder ways, some easy ways. And we're actually gonna build our own model tonight to tell the difference between Chris Williams, who's one of the V Brown Bag hosts, and our beloved uh, Betty White, who has left us uh, recently. So we're gonna do that too tonight. All right, so that's let's- awesome. uh, I, I don't want to interrupt, but that's just awesome. <laughs> you just wait, it's, it's awesome. In fact, Chris, so, I, so Chris and I are coworkers, and as I was going through this and building it, I kept sending him crazy stuff that I was doing, and he was like, this is awesome. So Chris couldn't be with us tonight. He's actually a poor guy. I think he's in St. Bart's with his wife, um, and I'm just seeing his pictures every day on Twitter. It looks like heaven, so um, I'm jealous. So that's why Chris couldn't be with us tonight. All right, so the star of the show, uh, this is Taz short for Tasmanian devil, of course. Uh, Taz is, is an awesome cat. Taz is about 10 now. Uh, got him and his, his brother Gigi when they were just kittens. Uh, but Taz is uh, 20 pounds, very large. His favorite thing to do is eat, I think. Super friendly, um, male cat, um, kind of bored. So when I first started learning about machine learning and self-driving cars, I was thinking, oh, maybe we can like exercise Taz a little bit. And, Give him something to do instead of like doing crimes around the house, like chewing on flowers and knocking things over. So Taz was kind of the how I got all started with this. All right. So how does one build a self-driving cat bot? It's actually quite easy. So a couple of years ago, 
NVIDIA, who of course makes the GPU cards that you all know and love, as well as machine learning servers and things like that, right? Um, they decided to come out with a single board GPU that was priced for like makers, like for people who might be buying a Raspberry Pi, right? And uh, so the first one they came out with was $99. 128 GPU cores, $99. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. I've always wanted to get started with machine learning. I was starting to do some, some understanding with it. I didn't have a GPU to do things quickly. So I bought one of these $99 boards and started playing with it. And it was awesome. And, and this, after I went through all the NVIDIA uh, tutorials and did all sorts of cool stuff, then I learned you could build a self-driving car. I was like, oh my God, that's awesome. So um, there's a whole bunch of kits you can buy. I bought one from a company uh, called SparkFun that was not great. It was top heavy. I had to solder a bunch, which is not something I do. It was not great. I sent it back. Then I found this one from WaveShare, no soldering, just screw a bunch of people pieces together. There's a... Um, uh, rechargeable batteries. It was awesome. And so I took that, you screw the NVIDIA uh, Nano on top of it, which is what you see here. It's just this little little board here. You screw that on top of the, there, there's batteries um, on, inside of here, rechargeable batteries. And then uh, you load this operating system on, image on it from NVIDIA called Jetbot, which is everything you need. It's all ready to go, ready to start driving. And it's it's super cool. There's a, uh, there's a Jupyter Notebook that runs on it. You can connect to from your laptop, from a web browser. If you don't know what a Jupyter Notebook is, it's basically, um, it's a, it's a web-based server where you can step through Python code and have it do stuff step-by-step. Step. And so there's all these experiments you can do connecting wirelessly from your laptop to this, to this jet bot and run experiments and even send it driving around the house. So very cool. Um, the sad part is, so it was $99 when I got the first one, and then they came out with an even cheaper one for $59. The problem, of course, with the global supply chain right now is you can't get these things. And if you can find the $59 board, I checked the other day, it was $300 because people had it in stock or they were trying to sell it used. So that's crazy. So hopefully that'll all go away eventually, right, when manufacturing catches up. But the new price of this board that can drive this car is only $59, which is Pretty cool for 128 GPU core single board computer with a lot of connectivity on it. Okay, so that's how you build a, a jetbot, uh, and it's awesome. So let's start looking at you know how you work with the jetbot, what it does, right? So I mentioned the Jupyter notebook, and so that's this. So while you're running through the Jupyter notebook, it actually pops up a live uh, video of what the camera. It's just a regular Raspberry Pi camera on the front of it what the camera is seeing as it's driving around. And what it's doing is it's, it's, it's processing live video and taking the frames of the video and basically with a machine learning model deciding, am I blocked or am I free, right? And if I'm free, I'm just gonna keep driving. And if I'm blocked, I'm gonna turn left. That's all the smarts, right? It's not exactly a Tesla, right? But it works and you're gonna see, I'll show you in the video um, as it driving around my kitchen floor, turning left with Taz chasing the laser uh, beam that I taped to the top of it. And then we'll, we're going to walk through the actual code that makes it work. And I'm going to do my best. Again, I'm not a Python expert. I'm not uh, a science, you know, a math expert, but I'm going to try to explain sort of how it works. It's not too, not too bad. There's only a couple steps and I'm getting better at it. So, but first let's, let's watch the bot um, in action uh, driving around my kitchen. <laughs> so you'll see, you see it turned left, it saw the cat and it was like, oh, I'm blocked, I'm gonna turn left. And then it gets stuck sometimes. I had to teach it that to, to try kind of get unstuck from under there. But at this point I hadn't, so I pulled it out, threw it back on the floor and off it went. And you see Taz chasing the laser beam. And as it gets close to Taz, it's like, oh man, I'm blocked, I better turn left. And it kind of just keeps, you know, Taz is like all over it. So it keeps turning left and then off it goes. And, and I, I actually put a program into it to stop after a certain minutes, a certain couple of minutes, but it'll just keep running and running and until the batteries run out, which is like a long time. So you, you, so have, that, hacked, you have hacked how to make a fat cat do exercise. This is crazy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I just think that's just so cool. And while it's doing that, you can actually watch the video live as it's doing it running around, you're running around the place. So, so that's, that's that. Um, later on, we're actually going to see this chicken one. So 
because we have six chickens at our, at our house in the backyard. All right, so let's look at the code. So for those of you who um, have done Python before, maybe some of you are more advanced in machine learning than I am, and you understand this better than I am, but I'm gonna just sort of step through what was just happening with the JetBot as it was driving around our kitchen, okay? And we're gonna talk about some of these terms a little more in detail later about like what's a neural network because that's real that's the whole the whole concept behind machine learning is a neural network and we're going to talk about that later i'm going to make an analogy to how the brain works and it moves your body and things like that but so let's just go through this so so torch is um you've you may have heard of tensorflow from google that's their machine learning um libraries that you can use torch is something called pytorch it's the it's Python native uh, parallel library for also building neural networks. So that's what that is. We bring that in just so we can do neural network stuff, which is basically turning things into math and making decisions on math and doing something at the end in it with an artificial intelligence. Torch Vision is, is a whole bunch of models that have already written by really smart people. I'm not one of them that you can bring in. And so we're bringing in this, this uh, model called AlexNet written by someone named Alex. And uh, we're going to say, OK, we're going to use that. And the output of, so what's the model going to look like? We're going to have some inputs. We're going to do a whole bunch of math. And what, how many outputs are we going to have? Well, we're going to have two outputs, blocked or not blocked. And so then it's going to build this model that takes inputs, does a bunch of junk, and it has two outputs, blocked or not blocked. All right, great. And instead of using the standard model, we're going to use this one from NVIDIA that they've already, they've already built a model based upon a, a million pictures from the little Raspberry Pi camera of, of a robot being blocked and not blocked. <laughs> and that's how it works. The cool thing about it is you can actually put your own images in. So if it, if it keeps thinking like your refrigerator is unblocked and keeps running into your fridge, you can put in pictures of your fridge and say, hey, this is blocked dummy, and it'll rebuild the model. All right. Um, in order to use GPU uh, to make it go faster, uh, it's called, it's a CUDA, it's called a CUDA. So we're, we're saying, hey, I've actually got a GPU. There's a library called CUDA that's only for NVIDIA, but it's open source. And we're gonna use this CUDA GPU. And so basically take this model here that we just defined and throw it in the GPU. Don't run it on the CPU, throw it in the GPU. So that's what that's doing. All right, now, uh, CV2 is computer vision, so we can use the camera. Uh, NumPy is just Python you know, number library. And this is the part that is so hard for me to kind of explain, but the way a neural network works is you take something like a photograph or whatever, and you turn it into a multidimensional math matrix, which makes my head hurt. And that multidimensional math matrix then gets calculations done on it to decide whether it's a face or an ear or a chicken or whatever. So that's what we're doing here is we've put this thing together that's gonna turn a frame of a video, turn it into a, a tensor, which is where TensorFlow comes from, which is a multidimensional math model, and then process it. Don't ask me anymore, because I can't answer it. But anyway, that's, that's what that's doing. So turning the picture into a math model that we can run through our, our neural network. Okay, this stuff's a little bit easier. Traitlets are just like, hey, let's get some data from somewhere. Um, Let's let's display stuff in this um, in this Jupyter notebook, which is that I can see the video, I can see the little widgets going up and down. Here's the widgets, which are the sliders. Um, let's use the camera and um, let's throw some sliders up. Are we blocked or free? I, I I wrote this one myself. This is the GPU slider. How much of the GPU is being used? Uh, Bodaba and display those things. Okay, great. So. Then NVIDIA has defined um, um, a Python library called a robot. So let's instantiate a robot, great. Now here's where all the good stuff happens, right? So we're gonna create this function called um, update. So whenever a, a new image hits the camera as it's sucking in video, let's do something with it, right? Let's, let's process it, let's throw it at the, let's pre-process it to turn it into a neural, you know, into a tensor, into this math model, multi-dimensional math model. And then let's take a look at it, right? So let's throw it through the model. Remember, we have two outputs from the model, blocked or not blocked, right? So based upon that, we are going to update the slider to show how much we're blocked. And if the probability we're blocked is less than 
keep driving. Okay, that's this. Hopefully you can see my mouse. If the probability is greater than 50%, greater than or equal to 50%, I guess, that we're blocked, turn left and then sleep for one one thousandth of a second, <laughs> get another image. So that's basically the loop right here, right? Get an image every one one thousandth of a second, decide whether we should keep driving or whether we should turn left. Pretty cool for a little $59 computer that it can do all this and just keep driving. Um, all right, great. So then here's where, here's where it all starts to happen. We say camera, okay, turn the camera on and then everything just goes, whoom, off it goes. And then when you want to stop it, you just run the next next one, which is turn the camera off, unlink everything, clean up, goodbye. All right. Any questions about that? I probably can't answer them, but that's Python and that's how it all works. So it's kind of simple. The genius of it is that NVIDIA did it all, did all the code for us. All we had to do was run it. All right. So let's go back. So that's and, and that's how a lot of times what happens is they may put something out there but you try it and it doesn't work until you do this and this and this. So you basically just said you, you, you ran it and it worked. Yeah. <laughs> yep. It's, it's, it's amazing. There's so many examples and, and it's all on GitHub and there's a gentleman, uh, Dusty, it's like his, he wrote all this stuff. And if you open an issue, like he's on it, like it's, I get blown away by open source. Now, granted, the guy works for NVIDIA, right? Wants this stuff to work, but he works in the IoT division and he wrote all this stuff and he keeps updating it like all the time and making it better and bringing features in that people, I mean, it's like a real, it's how open source works, right? You you ask for features and somebody works on it and they make it better. And it's just like, it's incredible. Um, that really, really great people at NVIDIA, they're, they're, they really want to make all this work for people. Okay, and I'm wearing my NVIDIA shirt. They gave me some swag after I, I wrote like a nice blog post and I did some stuff for them. So they sent me some free stuff. So that was nice of them. All right. So that's um, part one is done. Part one was how do I build my own laser guided cat bot? Buy some stuff, burn an SD card, boot it, run some code remotely from your laptop. That's how you do it. Okay. All right. Let's talk about machine learning tools. Easy, hard. Um, free, lots of them are free. You can run them in the cloud. You can run them on your laptop. You don't have to buy a GPU, which are impossible to get these days. And some are easy and some are harder. So we're gonna talk about some of these now, and then we're gonna, we're gonna build our actual Chris Betty model. So I'll just go, I don't know. I'm gonna go in clockwise order. So hello AI world is how I got started. So before I bought my robot, I just had the board. I just had that little board and this hello AI world <clears throat> is code, excuse me, I'm gonna mute and then I'm gonna cough. Okay, so hello AI world is a bunch of code that you can either, um, it's C in Python, you can download it and compile it on your little NVIDIA board or there's actually a container that you can just, you know, pull a container down and just run it. All the binaries are already there but you need to have an NVIDIA uh, GPU to use it. But it's all these programs that just do stuff. You don't have to write your own programs. It's just, here's a program that recognizes images. Here's a program that detects objects in images and draws boxes around them. Here's a program that builds new models based on images that you shove into it, like we're gonna do with Chris and Betty. It's amazing. And, it's, and the thing that's cool about it is because it's written by NVIDIA for NVIDIA GPUs, it is fast, like it recognizes video at 200 frames per second. It's it's blazingly fast it, on just like a tiny cheap GPU. It's really impressive. And I ran some benchmarks, I'll show you those later. Okay, uh, if we go around clockwise here, so Google Collab, uh, highly recommend you check this out. It was how I got started with machine learning, um, got to know somebody at Google who helped me out as I was learning TensorFlow. And what Google Collab is, is it's a free site, uh, collaborator, I forget what it is, collab.google.com or something, but all the links are in here. In fact, this is, this is a hyperlink itself. Um, you just go there and they have examples or you can put your own, you can put your own Python code in there if you want, you can run through their examples. And what's cool about it is it's free. You can run this code on what's probably in GCP. You can, you, you can choose a CPU, you can choose a GPU or you can choose a TPU. And it's free. 
now there's, you can't like run it for like days. You can run it for like, you know, minutes or maybe an hour before it like kicks you off, but it's completely free to run and try experiments and pull data in and build models and stuff like that. So we're actually going to build the Chris Betty model in Google Collab for free with a GPU for free. It's amazing. Um, Kaggle is kind of um, where the machine learning geeks hang out, right? So, so Kaggle is another free site where they have um, a public data set. So if you wanted to pull down public data sets and build your own models on images, on numbers, on um, there's a famous model on um, who made it off the Titanic and who didn't. Uh, there's like flowers, uh, being able to recognize handwriting, all this kind of stuff. They have different competitions, which are kind of cool. Like, hey, we're looking to see if someone can build a model that can recognize um, cancer cells in, in uh, mammograms faster, right? Things like that, like people trying to do good work for the world. Um, then there's code that you can get and you can run. It's also, this is also a, a Jupyter Notebook. You can host it there. You can choose a GPU, a TPU, same thing at Kaggle, all free. So you don't have to buy a GPU, which you can't get these days anyway. You can just go there and run your code as long as it doesn't run for longer than an hour. Okay, so those are free. Those are web-based. Um, Darknet is something I stumbled on as I was doing some education. It's kind of like the NVIDIA one but it'll run on a CPU or a GPU. So it's compiled C code. So you um, get Git clone this repository called Darknet and you run the C, you know, you have a C compiler, right? You compile it. And then you have this program called Darknet, which, which is a Swiss army knife. It does everything, right? It, it does everything that the NVIDIA one does, except you can run it on CPUs if you want. You can pull it down on your laptop and just run it on a CPU and detect images and look at videos and build new models. and it's amazing. The person who built it is super smart and it's it's really easy to use. It may not be as high performance as um, the, the NVIDIA ones, but it doesn't require an NVIDIA uh, GPU. It's a great way to do cool stuff with zero programming. All right, <clears throat> let's move on. Okay, um, let's set some, some terms. We're going to talk about tensors and TensorFlow, I think, on the next screen. Let's just talk about AI in general, right? So AI is a superset. It's kind of a, a, an umbrella term. And it's basically means, you know, computers making decisions on their own, given some input is really what, what AI, AI means. Take a drink. Okay, so that's just any sort of uh, computers making decisions based on input. Okay, machine learning <clears throat> is kind of a simple form of AI where you, which is sort of this table here, you pump in some data to, um, to a computer and you tell it to build a model on that. And so it, but you've sort of defined, you've already defined it, right? You've, you've already told it, hey, if it's 155 grams and rough, it's an orange. If it's 180 grams and it's rough, it's an orange. If it's, if it's sort of lighter, but smooth, it's an apple. Right, so you can just send it this stuff where you're already telling it the class and you're telling it how to figure out what class it is. You're, you're really telling it how to think, right? And then, so then once you've done that, you can then throw it a curveball and say, hey, I've got this thing that's 120 grams and smooth. What do you think it is? And if, it, if you gave it enough input, it would probably figure out that it was an apple, right? So that's how machine learning works is you kind of do most of the work for it and say, Hey, go build a model based on this. Oh, that reminds me. Actually, I didn't. I didn't think of this when I was putting the presentation together. The best description. Oh, my Google just woke up. Um, the, um, the best description of machine learning I ever saw was in Wired magazine, which is the only magazine like on paper I still get. I think I've been getting it since 1993 or something like that. I love that magazine. And um, Wired magazine said machine learning and AI is like training a, a dog, right? Training a dog to sit or fetch or shake hands or whatever, right? You know it worked, but you have no idea what's inside the dog's brain that's making it work. And that's kind of machine learning. You, you can't go like really look at the model you built to try to figure out how it works. It's just like, does it work or does it not work? And if it doesn't work, well, then we need to train it differently. It's a lot like training a dog. You have no idea what's going on in that brain. You just know, is it working or not? And do I need to retrain it? So I really like that, that description. 
All right, the last one is deep learning. Now this is where you, um, you don't tell the model any features and it's kind of like what we're gonna do tonight, which is, hey, here's a bunch of pictures of Chris. Here's a bunch of pictures of Betty. You figure it out, right? And, and so then the AI really churns, right? So it, it, starts, it starts trying things, right? And it's like, well, I think like, hey, this thing you just threw at me has like a dark blotch down here. <laughs> and this one doesn't have a dark blotch down here. So I'm going to say like, maybe that's a feature that I should say is important, right? And then it'll keep like testing, testing, testing and be like, did that work? Did it not work? Did this work? Did it not work? And it'll keep like changing the math until it, it starts getting it right. And what you give it is a bunch of images to train on and then ones it's never seen before to test. So it, it takes these training images. It tries to build a model to say, okay, I think if I do this math on a picture of Chris, it should come out to be Chris. And if I do this math on a picture of Betty, it should come out to be Betty. And then you throw it an image it's never seen before and go, well, did it work? And it's like, well, yeah, it worked 75%. Let's see if I can get it to 80%. And that's how deep learning works. It just sort of, it churns and churns and churns and tries more math and different math on this big multidimensional array of pixels and until it kind of gets close enough. I see there's something in the chat. This is a good time to stop, Ariel. I was just saying hi to Kyle Murley. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, the chat popped, popped down. There you go. All right, cool. All right. Uh, get rid of the chat off my screen. Okay. So that's AI, machine learning, deep learning. All right. Now, again, I'm not a math guy. This makes my head hurt, but I've kind of alluded to some of this, right? So a tensor is a multidimensional math array um, that gets evaluated and then through different, different layers, what are called hidden layers. So, so let's, let's just use like, here's a simple math example. Where we take things and we add and we multiply and we come up with a result, right? It, it, that's kind of how a successful model works, but in a much more complicated way, because there's, there can be a whole bunch of layers that it goes through to kind of break things down and get closer and closer and closer and closer to say, I think I've got it. So in this case, in terms of like, this is a famous, which is a, a flower, an iris, right? Where I can say, hey, um, I'm gonna give you the petal length and width, the sepal length and width, and whether it has a yellow patch. And, and I'm gonna tell you these things about these different flowers, and you're gonna take that in, and you're gonna figure out at the end of it, whether it's an iris or not an iris, right? And so maybe I just pumped you some data that didn't have a yellow patch. So you're like, man, it's probably not an iris. Maybe I sent you something where the petals are too short, too long. But going through all this math in here, it's going to figure that out. It's going to have these two classes as it comes out, just like blocked and unblocked. And just like Chris and Betty, it's going to do this and keep figuring it out and keep doing math and going backwards and forwards until it gets it right. And that's sort of how it builds a machine model. Now, why this is like a neural network, like your brain, is you have these neurons, right, in your brain that fire to do things like make you blink right? Close your hand, move your leg. And so the input to make you blink, it probably has to be enough input, right? I mean, we blink, uh, what, 11 times a minute or something anyway. But I mean, let's just say it was dusty or the sun was in your eye. Or you get all these inputs to your brain that say, I think it's time to blink. My eyes dry. And then you blink. It's kind of how a neural network works. It just takes all this input. And if all the input lines up just right, it's like, okay, it's an iris. It's not an iris. It's Chris. It's Betty. Uh, stop for a question, Ariel, or just more howdies. We, we are having just fun. With okay, good. Teaching. Betty always gets the last laugh. Excellent. All right, good. Okay. Um, so that's, this is hard and the math that in it is really hard unless you're a math major, which I'm not right. So, so this is, this is what we're going to build tonight. We're going to build a very deep neural network that takes a picture, which is a very complicated thing. It's it's a lot of data, right? And and it's a and it's color. It's not even black and white, right? So every pixel has like every pixel is multidimensional, right? And the model's going to going to grab some pixels and try to figure out is it an eye? Is it an edge of an eye? And it's going to it's going to just crunch and crunch and crunch until it figures out. Okay, I think I found this face, and I think it's Chris, or I think it's Betty. So that's what we're going to be doing. And again, you can't, you don't know how a dog's brain works. You just know whether it learned to shake or not shake. If you need better treats or whatever to train it better. All right. 
All right, let's go and show you some of this stuff. So um, before we get to build that model, I'm going to show you just a, a Google Collab here. And this is what they call TensorFlow for beginners. I put this little scale up here. This is so dense. This one is like so hard to understand. This is like people at Google think this is easy, right? Because this is quick. This is for beginners. So let's just open it up here and we'll go through it. I'm, I may explain it, I may not explain it, but so this is, again, this is a, uh, a Google Collab. We can, we can, you know, connect, we can choose what kind of runtime we're going to use, or we're going to use a GPU or a TPU, you know, when we do it, da, da, da. But anyway, so um, what this one, this is like the beginner one, and I'm not, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because we have other things we want to cover, but it, it loads up TensorFlow, which is Google's Tensor thing. We're using PyTorch on the NVIDIA one. They both do the same thing. PyTorch is more native to Python. It's more um, it's more parallel in TensorFlow, but TensorFlow is like the golden child of machine learning because Google built it. Uh, it loads in a, a data set, which this MNIST data set is actually handwritten characters that you can try to recognize handwritten characters. That's what it is. It builds, it builds a model. It does some stuff I don't understand and it tries to predict it and then it trains it and it tells you the probability of how you did, right? So that's for beginners. I don't understand much of that. You really have to understand TensorFlow to understand that code. So there's better ways to do this stuff. Um, as you go along you, and you read and you read and read, you probably can understand more of that stuff, but building models from scratch makes my head hurt. So, all right. Speaking of building models from scratch, let's do it. So this is another Google Collab um called retraining an image classifier that i do understand and i've actually used this model myself to tell the difference between our chickens and a husky dog and so i used and i so i get this and i'm so i what i do is i modified it to tell the difference between chris or betty and so we're going to build that model right now and it's going to build quickly because it's only two classes and they're quite different so let's go through this and i'll show you how you do this stuff live and I'll explain it as we go through. <clears throat> so let's get up to the top here. All right. So first, we're going to make sure that we, uh, of course, we're using a GPU, so it goes fast, which we are. All right. And I'm going to try to explain this as we go th as we go through this one. This is provided by Google. It's pretty cool. So um, iter tools are just ways to do looping, um, plotting. We're going to plot the success of our of our uh, model on a graph. So that's what that is. Our friend NumPy we talked about before. Here's our TensorFlow, so we can build tensors for machine learning. TensorFlow Hub is a bunch of a bunch of models and stuff. And then um, so and then OS of course, so we can do stuff like read files and whatever. So if you've never seen a Jupyter notebook, this is how it works. There's like descriptions, there's code, and if you just click on Go, it runs that code. So it's now so you'll notice it's connecting, it's initializing. It got me a, a CPU and some memory somewhere in the magical Google Cloud. And now it's running this Python um, in Google Cloud. And so this first step is done and it printed out TensorFlow version 2.8, which is the latest version. And we have a GPU, yay, which we didn't pay for, which is amazing. Um, okay, now all these smart researchers all over the world keep trying to build better models to recognize images really fast. So if we're doing self-driving cars or whatever, this one says, hey, just use this one. It's a great model, but if we wanted to, we could choose a different one, right? But we're not going to. So that's the model we chose. Batch size is how many how many um, images do I bring in and process at a time? In this case, 16. Kind of depends on how much memory you have. So here's all the models. La, la, la. We're just going to take the default. And um, oh, we need to run this. OK, so we're going to use this mobile net model, which is a nice model for recognizing images. So we said, yep, that's the model we're using. Great, great, great. OK. And there it is, and there's input size. Okay, so now we need to get some data. So um, what's what are what are, one of the things I love about um, Google Collab is it makes it work. You works really easily with Google Drive, and I'm kind of an Android geek. I use been using I'm a Google guy. I've been using Google Drive forever, and so what I did was I took all those photos of of Chris and Betty and and tarred them and G zipped them into a bundle and just threw them on my Google Drive. And so let's go get them. So the first thing I have to do is authenticate to uh, Google Drive so I can access all my, my Google Drive stuff. And there we go. So that's going to connect to my Google Drive and it's going to actually mount it to this little uh, notebook. It takes a couple seconds, 
but it's going to mount it and it's going to show up in my my temporary file system which is amazing and so cool so here's my files in my little temporary file system and there's my g drive and all my folders and everything and we're going to get all my all our stuff from there for this experiment i could have just done it like a wget right and sucked it off some website somewhere but i think this is so cool plus it makes it easier to work with my laptop and stuff all right so what are we going to do we're going to get this um bunch of images we're going to untar them and we're going to throw them in this data directory for tensor tensorflow so bang uh grab the data it untarred it great now it's it actually shoves all, all the data sets here so let's do a little os command and there they are so here's a bunch of here's a bunch of pictures of betty in the betty directory and here's a bunch of pictures of chris in a chris directory yay all right and here's some other ones i was doing huskies and chickens the example one is a bunch of flowers uh you can pull from google blah 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 okay now we talked about train and test uh, there's two ways you can do train and test you can do 80 20 you can do 80 10 10. you can do 80 percent of the images are going to be i'm going to build my model on and 20 of them i'm going to set aside that i've never seen just to make sure that the model is working that's that's called train test there's also a train test val where it's like 80 10 10 whatever this one uses uh 80 20. so what what's going to happen here is it's basically just going to take all these images and split them up into 80 for for training and 20 percent for test so that's what that's doing. There's the split there, the 20% split. Great, great, great. And that's basically what that did. Found two classes, which are Chris and Betty. All right, this is where you define the model. As you can see, I don't really understand this part, but this is, we do some fine tuning on the model. Uh, we build the model, which um, I don't really understand this. Here's the class to, names. I have to say that all this process is way more automated than I thought it would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's why I'm doing it because I'm no, I'm not I'm no super genius. But all right, now we're getting ready to actually train our model. Um, so we have to compile it and tell it what the learning rate is. This is other stuff that you can read about that I once read about and quickly forgot. Um, it's just like setting up the model. Okay, now we're actually going to go and train the model and we're only going to use five epics now for a lot of different classes it's going to take you at least 100 epics to um to get a model that works but this one is kind of simple and chris williams looks nothing like betty white so you're going to see like after the first pass through the data it's going to be like yeah i got it so here's the first pass it's already like at 91 percent i'm good and then it's like on the second pass it's like 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent 100 percent yeah Chris is nowhere near as good looking as Betty White. So I'm good. I figured this out. Um, now, so it's so now we've got a model that we can use and we can actually test unknown images against. Now let's do a little plot and let's plot those, uh, see how we did. And you know, uh, what was the loss as we we're going along, how, how, how close we we're getting to accurate. And then you'll notice we went to hundred percent right away. Don't expect this when you build your own model. Like if it's like a complex model of more than two classes, it's going to take a while, right? It's going to be like, mm, and eventually it's going to get up. It may never get to 100, but it'll get into the 90s and, and that'll be cool. And, and you'll be really happy with that. All right, so now we have a model. It's in memory. And now this is the fun part. We're going to throw random images at this model and see if we can figure out if it's Chris or if it's Betty. So here's one, obviously. So it's a positive number for Betty and a negative number for Chris, okay? I, I really I really blew up my screen here. This Betty, let's keep hitting it till we get a Chris. Lots of Bettys, lots of Bettys. There's a Chris. All right, so that says, yep, I'm, I got a positive number on Chris. Yep, that's Chris. And just keep hitting it. There's a Betty, really positive that was Betty, really positive that was Chris. And so it's kind of fun. So we built a model and now we're testing the model and it actually works. So that's that's pretty cool. And then we can actually save the model. So if we ever wanted to use this again, we don't have to rebuild it. We can just write this model to disk, load it up into memory when we want to use it, and, and go nuts. All right. Any uh, any questions, Ariel? Or we just keep chugging along here? I think we're chugging along. And I also want okay. to remind you if anybody wants to actually speak, because you know the, the question may be complicated to, to type, just let me know in chat and I'll give you a microphone. Thanks. All right, we're closing out here. So I want so Darknet is a, as I said, Swiss Army knife. It's compiled C code. It works. You can do a million things with it. Um, these are all the things you can do with it. What we're going to do is we're going to do Nightmare, which is a reverse neural network. 
which is super fun. This made Chris crack up. A reverse neural network is instead of looking at images and telling me what they are, I'm going to tell you to look at an image and force you to find something that's not there. In this case, I want you to find all the eyes in a picture of Chris that aren't there. And that's why it's called nightmare. So it just like forces the model to go in reverse and just keep churning and churning and churning. Like you could tell it, find all the cats in this picture and there are no cats, but I want you to keep trying really hard until you can find cats, even if you have to guess. So we're gonna, so we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna do an image detection. Is there a question? I see a chat popped up. We, we had a comment, uh, Giovanni okay. Greshi. This means I can move the model and not the data set. Yes, cool. yes. Right, once you've got the model, you can use it. And those were like all those models we were downloading. All right, uh, hold on, I lost my mouse. Uh, hold on, I gotta do this so I can close the chat. Okay, all right, so let's have some fun. See, it's 9.15 already. All right, so we're gonna do nightmare. So we're gonna do 20 iterations on a picture of Chris and force the reverse neural network to try to find eyeballs. And there we go. So that's Chris's profile picture at work. <laughs> and I churned it through this nightmare and it found all the eyes or slugs or something that aren't actually there in, uh, in Chris's face. And that's called nightmare and that's called a reverse neural network. And poor beloved Betty, here's our beloved Betty and uh, what it did finding all the eyes or slugs or whatever in her photo doing, doing nightmares. So that was kind of fun. Something you would never use for anything functional, but it's, it's how compute AI has nightmares. Now, the other one, which is actually useful, is to detect images. And I'm going to show you a video later where I classified all six of our chickens by name. And in a live video, live streaming video, uh, boxes would run around them and give them their name as they went along. In this case, we're going to just use a standard model and um, a picture of Times Square and have it find stuff. So there we go. It found, you know, some people, some cars, a TV monitor, which is actually, you know, Times Square, big screen. And that's detect. You can run this after an image. You can run it uh, against a video, against a streaming video, any input it'll take, and it'll just do this in Darknet as well as in some of those Hello AI World programs from NVIDIA. It's great. So if you just want to do stuff, you can just take these programs and do stuff and build models and recognize stuff. You don't have to do any coding at all, which is pretty awesome. All right. Question, Ariel, or just keep chugging. It reminds me of They Live. I, I didn't get that right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So well, we're down to our last couple of slides here, which is perfect timing. It's almost 20 after. So this was a benchmark that I did uh, using Darknet to show you the difference be on a much larger, more complex data set uh, that ran, I think, 100 epics or something like that. So I've got um, a Xavier, where's a picture of here. NVIDIA was nice enough to send me these because I wrote a glowing uh, blog article about all the fun I was having. And that one has 512 GPUs in it. I knew it was about $700. Now there are, people are just scalping for like $3,000, but it's a $700 uh, single board computer with 512 GPU cores on it. And I ran, um, I told Darknet to build a model on these 60,000 um, images of 10 classes. It's a free data set from University of Toronto, actually where our oldest uh, graduated from, and build a model on 60,000 images, right? Which is a great test, right? So on the Xavier using the 512 GPU cores, it ran and built the whole model in five minutes. Great, then I'm like, all right, how, am I, how about my big beefy MacBook Pro, right? Which doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU in it, um, but it has a nice CPU. It's got an i7 with six cores, 2.6 gigahertz. Let's run that. That took 42 minutes, which is about eight times slower than my little puny uh, GPU thing. And then I'm like, well, what if we run it on the CPU of the Xavier, which is really just a tiny like ARM CPU. It's like enough to get the code running and shove it over to the GPU. And that took 95 minutes to build the model. So 19 times slower than the GPU. So I just wanted to kind of show you the difference. If you can get access to a GPU, even if it's a free one in Google Collab or Kaggle, do it, right? Or if you can get your hands on one of these nanos, that's that's cool. Or Xavier, that's awesome too. All right. So speaking of image detection, um, this was very time consuming, but made me really happy, right? So we have six chickens named after the kids in the movie Captain Fantastic. 
If you've never seen the movie Captain Fantastic with Vigo Morganson, watch it. It's really fun. And our youngest named our chickens after the kids from Captain Fantastic. So we have Zaja and Kyler and Relian and all these names that were impossible for me to learn until I had to learn them uh, and build them into a machine learning model. So what I did was I had to take 100 pictures of each chicken and draw a box manually and say, this is Kyler, this is Zaja. So I've got not only photos, but I've got this sort of text file that bounds a box with a name for each one. And then I fed that into an image detection model, which then cranked for a while and built a model. And you'll see up here on the right is the frames per second. You know, Darknet's only doing about 15. The NVIDIA GPU can do like 200. And then it, it shows you its confidence level as it's going through. So let's just play the video. And you can watch those numbers. You can watch the boxes uh, pop up as it, as it goes along. So you see Vesper, Relian, that's, that's Zaja in the back, that's Bo in the front, who hasn't sort of come in and recognized yet. That's Kyler, the black and white one in the back. Um, but as they walk around, see, I had a, had a false one there for a second. That's actually Relian. The picture, the side view is the, is the most accurate. When it sees a side view of a chicken, it's like, oh, okay, I got it. And, um, and it can kind of figure it out. So it's like, yeah, I don't see, I don't have, oh, here comes Bo, there's Bo, good. So, so that was really fun. And this is on YouTube. You can go to my YouTube and watch this all day long if you want. So, um, so that was really satisfying because it, it, it was very time consuming, but I really learned about how best to build an image detection model, how to draw the boxes right, how to, how, to, how to label them. It was very time consuming, but it made me happy because now with stream video to the coop, I can watch my AI recognize my chickens, which, which sort of makes me happy. Um, all right, last piece, and we got a couple minutes, this is perfect, is each of the cloud platforms, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, have what's called auto machine learning, where you don't have to do diddly. All you have to do is like, you don't have to label pictures, you don't have to do anything. You can just upload a mess of pictures, which is what I did in, in GCP. I just uploaded all those same pictures that we just built our model on. And then like you're working in Google Photos, I said, hey, okay, these pictures are Chris, these pictures are Betty, uh, can you please you know, build a model for me? And so loaded them up and said, yep, I got enough pictures, I'm gonna split them up into train valve test and I'm gonna build a model. And so it started building the model. It's like, yeah, I'm good, 100%, it's good to go. And so in this case, I had to pay for the time that it was building the model, which was kind of an overnight thing, but not too bad. And then once it had the model and I wanted to host it so I could throw stuff in it, I had to pay for the time that it was running the model. So I kind of just ran the model in GCP, threw some images at it to make sure it worked and then shut it down so it would stop charging my credit card. But it's the easiest way to build a model. What's cool about these models is once you've built them, you can actually uh, pro programmatically access them. You can have like a, a Python program or something running your laptop that's making calls to this model running in GCP and like throwing images and trying things. It's pretty cool. I've done all that and it, it actually works. It's, it's, it's nice. So, so this is like really the, the, easy the easy way. And every one of the clouds has something in like this. You can just like throw documents or images at, it'll build a model for you and then you can use the model. They just want you to host there and, and charge you while it's, while it's running. That's it with six minutes left. So um, again, really just wanted to, this is a hobby of mine. I'm not an expert. I'm not a data scientist. I just think it's cool. I've learned a lot after the past, over the past couple of years, just bashing my head against this, finding the easy ways and the hard ways. Um, we'll share all this stuff out. It'll be on YouTube. I'll share the deck with anybody who wants it. And then I'll get all the links that were in the deck to Ariel and Cruz. I can put it in the, the YouTube description. So with five minutes left, are there uh, any questions? Uh, you're getting the standing ovation here. Uh, <laughs> Kyle Murley, love this great application of the tech. Chris Smith, Chris Smith, this was great. Giovanni Greshi, nice work, Dennis. The, the, the David Sol, great examples. I will have to steal them from you. Clap, clap, <laughs> clap, 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 clap. So really cool. I mean, I am amazed that you have built so many cool things. And I have two cats, and I'm already thinking that it would be easy to to train the model because one cat's white calico, the other's gray. So, <laughs> so we, we do have a question. Giovanni said, "How much time did it run, and how much did it cost?" I'm thinking he's he's talking about the latest. Oh, the GCP. It's 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 not bad. It's like a it might be a couple bucks. It really wasn't bad um, because it ran really fast. So 
I haven't, I haven't checked my bill yet, but it, I don't think it's a lot um, to run that model in GCP. I mean, I'd rather run it on my laptop because then it doesn't cost anything, you know, but, but uh, that's kind of the, the easy method. And trust me, I'm, I'm already at like NVIDIA, Jetson store, trying to figure <laughs> out what's the cheapest one I can get. Like you said, they're probably all gone, but I think yeah. I've seen them in Amazon too at some point. Yeah. When they came out. Well, I, I just want to thank everyone for coming. Um, Ariel, thanks for hosting. Nice to spend some some time with you tonight, as well as everybody who came. I really appreciate um, uh, having people come, right? Because I, I just wanted to share this. I wanted to try to um, teach people something and maybe maybe learn something and um, maybe make things a little bit easier for people. Uh, I really recommend everybody go to his blog, blog.pauci.net. Um, it, it's, it's a great blog. I hadn't seen it. This was one, one my first time and I already found your YouTube channel. I am a fan. So thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. And uh, Kyle has put in a couple of links as well for the rest of the, everybody oh, good. in the chat. Um, he gave, uh, he said your demo collapse was awesome. And if anybody wants to see a fun GUI driven auto ML tutorial, he provided a link. Nice. He provided one for every projects, which I'll click on and nice. I'll keep in there. Awesome. But yeah. Thank you again, Dennis. Thank you, everyone. I'll stop the recording now. And if anybody wants to hang out a little bit, you're welcome to stay. <laughs>